Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India welcome back to this course. Uh, so far uh, we have discussed uh, 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 turbulent combustion essentially we have discussed uh, the beginning from at the beginning of um, uh, this uh, this part of the course on turbulent combustion we have beginning as we have discussed essentially the physics of uh, turbulence, uh, uh, the modeling turbulence, uh, how you can basically use uh, uh, the Rand's uh, the Reynolds average and Navier Stokes equation to get an idea about the mean uh, flow field and how this when you average uh, these equations this problem the closure problem emerges and uh, then in the last class you have seen that how using this uh, mm, uh, different uh, eddy viscosity hypothesis we can essentially have this kind of closures uh, with we have the eddy viscosity closures uh, by using the mm, the mean uh, strain rates uh, we can use uh, them to close the 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 Reynolds average Navier Stokes equation and we have also seen how uh, for for reactive uh, scalars uh, uh, how problems uh, or uh, emerges in terms of closure of the reaction rate, the mean reaction rate or the reaction rate in terms of the mean temperature or the mm, scalar transport. So, there are problems. So, uh, and we have discussed uh, some simplified models okay, uh, in generalized simplified models like the eddy breakup model, the eddy dissipation concept, the eddy uh, dissipation model different things, mm, uh, how those can be used uh, uh, to model uh, turbulent combustion, but those are very like very preliminary and rudimentary models and actually the field of uh, turbulent combustion has progressed far beyond that. So, in this course uh, we will give you a glimpse of the modern developments in turbulent combustion and we will start that uh, by using uh, turbulent non premix combustion. So, you have seen that uh, uh, that in the beginning of the course we have essentially distinguished combustion in terms of non premix flames and premix flames. Non premix flames are those in which the fuel and air are separated as it enters into the combustion as it enters in the into the into the um, into the um, combustor. So, we have done actually the analysis of uh, one dimensional uh, laminar flame or the one dimensional chamber flame where the fuel and air uh, basically were separated by two uh, at, at on the two sides one on the left one on the right and the flame was formed somewhere in the middle okay and um, uh, well then we did an analysis of that and we obtained linear uh, profiles of uh, temperature of uh, mass fraction etc and then we did the droplet combustion also okay now but here in this class we'll take up uh, turbulent non premix combustion and this is divided into essentially these three parts uh, we will go with the introduction we'll say where you can essentially encounter um, uh, turbulent non premix combustion. We will then uh, dis introduce a very important concept called the mixture fraction. Okay. This we have not introduced, but this we can use uh, in laminar flames also. Uh, but essentially the importance of this and the beauty of this uh, concept of mixture fraction becomes evident in turbulent non premix combustion. And then we will use those ideas of mixture fraction to essentially do this analysis or modeling rather modeling of turbulent non premix combustion. And the majority of the material in this course is taken from these two books mainly turbulent combustion book uh, by Norbert Peters published by Cambridge University Press and this combustion theory by Norbert Peters from the CEFRC combustion energy frontier research center summer school Princeton uh, that these lectures were developed in 2010 and this is I believe is available online uh, uh, free of cost um, in, the, in the CEFRC website. Okay, so, this, these are both uh, the, uh, the references that we will follow uh, for this part of uh, turbulent combustion, turbulent non premix combustion and later in the next class turbulent um, uh, premix combustion in the next module turbulent premix combustion. So, in this module we will focus on turbulent non premix combustion. Now, why we will study that? As you see this course is on combustion in air breathing aero engines and of course, the gas turbine engine and ramjet engines are two very important parts and as such uh, in the gas turbine engines the most of the aero gas turbine engines utilize historically have utilized turbulent non premix combustion. Okay. So, essentially this you see is the essentially the gas turbine combustor. Okay. So, after the flow enters from the left to right through the compressor guide vents, it passes through a diffuser section okay, where uh, uh, in this part 
uh, where the pressure is slightly recovered and then it passes to this set of solars. So, when we will go into the main uh, when discussing uh, we, when we will go into discussion about the gas turbine combustors this details of this uh, combustors and this architecture will become more clear. But essentially here you have essentially you will see that the fuel uh, uh, is injected in a liquid sheet uh, uh, through this central injector and then this liquid evaporates uh, then this liquid essentially liquid sheet essentially breaks up and then in this uh, uh, droplets are formed large droplets are formed and then this large droplet breaks up into small droplets and then the small droplets evaporate and this uh, liquid this droplets are essentially of uh, kero of, of jet fuels. Uh, so, essentially this uh, liquid evaporates and then uh, it uh, basically forms a nearby cloud of this mixture of this fuel uh, mm -hmm. uh, essentially which then mixes with the air and uh, sometimes the point at which it mixes with the air uh, where the mixing is not very efficient and essentially the flame that you have is a non premix flame. Okay, so, in gas turbine aero gas turbine engines typically flames are have been historically has been non premix flames except with some recent developments which we will uh, discuss now uh, which we will discuss little later. And, uh, you see here you have the primary zone essentially the main uh, combustion will be will be uh, essentially uh, will be here. Mm, so, here you have the flame uh, like this uh, after coming out of this uh, after coming out of this injector uh, the flame will be some, something stabilized along here. And um, this is essentially a non premix flame or a partially premix flame though it can have some premix segments also, but predominantly this this type of classical gas turbine combustors utilized non premix flames. So, for understanding gas turbine combustion or for I mean in a in IC engine if you want to understand diesel combustion then this non premix flames are typical examples of uh, are examples of the kind of combustion that happens in in this uh, uh, typical engines of uh, non premixed of this of this gas turbines okay so of course there are something else also like uh, this uh, uh, cooling holes which essentially cools down the um, uh, the, temp the the uh, the hot gases so that uh, that uh, uh, the turbine uh, temperature can be controlled we can have a limited turbine entry temperature and um, in in ramjet engines also you see here uh, uh, we as a, as a, through the intake as the flow comes in it is essentially uh, through this shock trains uh, it's essentially a supersonic intake and then it uh, becomes subsonic through this uh, formation of the series of shocks and by the end time it enters into the combustor these are essentially uh, um, essentially uh, uh, subsonic um, uh, 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 flow and you have a flame stabilized in this uh, uh, in this uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, flame holders and uh, this uh, fuel is injected right upstream of this flame holders and uh, typically you get a uh, uh, decent amount of uh, non premixiness in this flow and the flame that you get is essentially a non premix flame also. So, ramjet engines um, and uh, 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 our uh, gas turbine engines are good examples of non premix flames though there are some uh, uh, this this is the, there are some regions also where you get premix flames, but a uh, large fraction of the flame is also non premix flame. Okay. So, as you know in non premix flames mixing is very important. So, uh, yes we will see that how we can essentially model mixing in, in non premix flames. As you remember if in the in the in when we did the analysis of the 1D non premix flames we essentially assumed that the chemistry was infinitely fast and uh, the uh, the, uh, the and essentially the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, flame uh, uh, parameters were essentially mixing controlled and here also we will see that how while modeling turbulent non premix flames this uh, hypothesis of the flame uh, time scale being essentially controlled by the mixing that the mixing being the rate limiting uh, step um, that hypothesis essentially holds here also on the right hand side you have an example of a lean premix pre vaporized combustor the, these are the very modern combustors which are used in uh, modern gas turbine engines like the TAPS uh, 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 two in annular premix solar combustor um, uh, the which powers essentially the Boeing 787 as you know. Um, uh, and here also you see that yes this has this has got main premix flame branches on the two sides, but it has also a pilot flame which is essentially non premix flame. Okay. So, this um, uh, as you again see that this non premix flame is also present in the even in the very modern uh, uh, gas turbine combustors. Now, as we have if you remember we discussed that there are disadvantages of non premix flames because you essentially cannot control the the temperature the temperature is always essentially the stoichiometric adiabatic flame temperature unless you have like something like this uh, cooling holes uh, here as we have seen here downstream but on other than that this temperature is high it's um, uh, uh, it's uh, isn't locally at the flame location the its uh, temperature is adiabatic uh, stoichiometric uh, adiabatic flame temperature and as a result of that all the pollutants are also being formed 
suit nox etc okay so that is the main disadvantage but i uh, will see later that uh, non premix flames are much more robust than premix flames because here you don't have a velocity scale like something like a flame speed so essentially it can be stabilized in fast flows also as long as there is mixing okay so uh, once again this uh, ad this fact that the non premix flame is essentially a mixing control phenomena has an advantage that uh, it is much more robust and it does not respond to the flow oscillations as much as a premix flame does so that is one um, uh, big advantage and uh, so non premix flames has been very very uh, prevalent in all these aero gas turbine engines and even in scramjet engines uh, uh, flame is uh, is a uh, to a large degree non premix though there are flame, uh, premix segments also so one thing you must understand this in the actual gas turbine engines that um, uh, flames are also uh, though they can be like um, uh, predominantly non premix there are like segments there are like regions which are premixed or partially premixed also okay so uh, it's uh, so it's it's a mix of these two and uh, uh, but uh, i mean uh, combustion modeling historically has progressed in a way that it models non premix flames and premix flame separately because of their uh, distinct properties uh, so uh, to understand though how to model essentially of a, a, a flame in a combustor which is predominantly non premix we will go into this course and uh, we will go into this detailed analysis and see how to essentially what are the approaches by which uh, non premix flames in this type of uh, engines uh, in this type of combustors can be modeled okay so uh, uh, in a lab the what you encounter uh, what you, you of course uh, 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 to make models you cannot use uh, directly go to the to go to a um, uh, gas turbine combustor so what you do is that what people have done is that they have basically done detailed measurements in these kinds of simple non premix flames which like can be like a jet flame counter flow flame flames in mixing layers and shear or salt stabilized flames okay so these are the typical uh, uh, well, these are the typical flames uh, people have studied in laboratory so the idea is that you develop uh, detailed uh, diagnostics using basically different kind of optical methods uh, people have done detailed measurements of the flow temperature species um, uh, etc uh, of uh, and uh, of these this different kind of uh, flames and then they have used different modeling approaches with which they have validated the experimental data okay so then the idea is that these tools that one develops for modeling the simple flames once they are robust and rigorous and we have developed sufficient confidence in them then these can be utilized towards essentially the modeling the actual non premix flames that happens in a real gas turbine engine or a real ramjet engine or a real scramjet engine so that is the approach okay so uh, people have really uh, done these kinds of flames in their lab so you will see this this is the examples of different kinds of uh, counter flow flame jet flame etc and um, uh, there are flames in essentially mixing layers so jet flames counter flow flames flames in mixing layers and um, these so the typical uh, yeah, this this pictures come from the turbulent non premix flame workshop workshop where essentially people have done um, different kind of uh, uh, flames the simple jet flames piloted jet flames bluff body jet flames um, uh, flame stabilized by bluff body and so all stabilized flames and um, uh, using all these uh, they have done detailed measurements in them and then uh, we have you people have used them for um, uh, for validating the different uh, numerical simulations okay so so from here on we proceed on to essentially the uh, turbulent non premix flame modeling first we will do the essentially introduce this mixture fractions concept or this mixture fraction space in a laminar non premix flame so we'll do a little bit of go back little bit into this uh, laminar flame or uh, this is generalized essentially but we'll go back to this once again to this uh, to apply this mixture fraction ideas uh, to the 1d uh, non premix chamber flame that we discussed okay so uh, we'll see how the mixture fraction uh, uh, concept can be applied in those uh, uh, those uh, those uh, kind of simple configurations and then utilizing them uh, we'll proceed to essentially see how the mixture fraction helps a lot when you uh, go for modeling uh, turbulent non premix flames okay so what does the mixture fraction why does it uh, come okay so as you see that um, uh, in 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 non premix flames the basic idea is that there is a very basic underlying embedding idea the embedding idea is that the chemical reactions are much faster compared to other rates okay chemical reactions are much fast are faster um, compared to other rates therefore diffusion okay diffusion in uh, when you say diffusion it means a diffusion of both heat as well as species so species as well as thermal diffusion is essentially the rate determining process it is the rate controlling process and is the rate of diffusion that governs how much their uh, combustion rate will be 
So, we have to essentially the idea is that let we need to find out a suitable conserved scalar ok. Uh, while as you remember the conserved scalar is one in which does not have a source term ok. So, which there is no source or sink term. So, that one is a conserved scalar. So, we need to obtain first we need to define a conserved scalar and obtain that a solution of our that conserved scalar and uh, so that we can use that for describing this mixing which is the de determining process ok. So, that is the idea. So, in search of that conserved scalar we go into define this mixture fraction. So, what is this uh, mixture fraction? The mixture fraction ok in a the mixture fraction is defined in a in this manner that if you have a two feed system what is a two feed system suppose you essentially have a suppose you have a, a, a nozzle like this ok uh, at the center of the nozzle this is an axisymmetric nozzle ok. So, you have a fuel and on the sides you have another annular nozzle annular uh, cylinder through which air is coming out ok. So, that is a two feed system. So, the two feed system means basically you have a feed of you have one li feed line of fuel we have one feed line of air and of course, this fuel and air are not mixing ok. So, then the mixture fraction definition is that in a two in such a two feed system the local ratio of mass flux originating from fuel feed to the sum of both fuel and oxidizer feed mass fluxes is defined as a mixture fraction ok. So, you see that the it is the local ratio of mass flux originating from the fuel feed to the sum of both the fuel and oxidizer mass fluxes. So, suppose the fuel mass flux is M 1 we will determine uh, use a symbol uh, subscript 1 for the fuel uh, uh, feed and we will use a subscript 2 for the um, airs feed. So, the mass flux from the feed line is M 1 and the mass flux from the oxidizer line is M 2. So, the sorry this is M 2 you see, but that is M 1 this need not be pure fuel it can cause in it can contain inert also. So, this is a fuel feed where you you have to have a def well defined mass uh, mass fraction for the fuel it need not be always 1. Similarly, here the oxygen mass fraction need not be 1 if it is air or any other things here also there can be oxygen and uh, nitrogen can be present in different pr proportions. So, but we call this is the oxidizer feed line and this is the fuel feed line the fuel feed line is designated by 1 and the oxidizer feed line is designated by 2 ok. So, the mixture fraction z is essentially the ratio of m 1 dot divided by the total m dot that is m 1 dot plus m 2 dot ok. So, uh, this is the I uh, will uh, just write it down z the local mixture fraction is defined as m 1 dot divided by m 1 dot plus m 2 dot. So, this is the mixture fraction. So, now this can be uh, 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 taken up in more details that uh, the y f u that is the unburnt fuel mass fraction then is essentially y f 1 that is the fuel uh, mass fraction in the stream 1 times z. Why is it so? This is because what is y f u? y f u is essentially m dot of f divided by m 1 dot plus m 2 dot ok and that is equal to m dot of f divided by m 1 dot times m 1 dot by m 1 dot plus m 2 dot ok. So, m dot of m dot f minus by m m 1 that is what is the mass fuel mass flux ok that is uh, uh, going on uh, inside through the field line 1 that is y f u ok y f 1 essentially times this is z. So, that is why y f u that is unburnt fuel mass fraction that is going in is essentially y f 1 times z ok. So, the total unburnt fuel mass fraction that is entering into the into this into this combustor is essentially given by y f 1 times z. Okay. Similarly, the oxidizer uh, the oxygen mass fraction that is uh, entering into the combustor is essentially y o 2 uh, dash 2 that is the oxidizer uh, mass fraction in the second line in the oxidizer stream times 1 minus z ok. And then combining this one can obtain a generalized uh, de definition of uh, a mixture fraction in terms of the mass fraction of the fuel and the oxidizer 
okay and this is given by z a mixture fraction at any point in space inside the combustor is given by nu I will come what nu is times y f minus y o 2 that is a local mass fraction of fuel times the and minus the local nu times the local mass fraction of fuel minus the local mass fraction of y o 2 plus the mass fraction of the oxygen in the S stream or the oxidizer stream that is coming in divided by nu times y f 1 that is the fuel mass fraction in the fuel stream plus the oxidizer mass fraction in the oxidizer stream. Now, this I just uh, work this out why it is so, but this is you will I promise you that this will turn out to be a very very useful concept. So, even if it seems little bit awkward at the beginning just you get accustomed to these notations and what it exactly means and it will become your friend very soon. Okay. So, now we, as you see that here the definitions are y of u is essentially the local mass fraction of the fuel in the unburnt mixture, unburnt fuel mass fraction, y of 1 is a mass fraction of the fuel in the fuel stream these two are not necessarily same because y of u is essentially is uh, in the unburnt mixture this is a mass fraction. Okay. Similarly, y of 2 is a mass fraction of oxygen in the oxidizer stream and nu, nu is very interesting is the stoichiometric mass ratio you saw this was this previously also is essentially nu O2 dashed times W O2 dash this is the stoichiometric uh, coefficient of oxygen uh, uh, times the molecular weight of oxygen divided by the stoichiometric uh, coefficient of um, fuel times the uh, mass fraction of fuel. So, but the how are these defined this is like nu F dashed times fuel plus nu O2 dashed times O2 goes to nu P double dash product. Okay. So, these are the stoichiometric coefficients. Okay. So, please keep this in mind. Mm, so, nu is essentially the stoichiometric mass ratio. So, the actual definition of z is this, okay. but at any point inside the combustor the z can be obtained from this. If you know the mass, uh, if you know the uh, y f and y o 2, mm, you can know this, but then this is not very useful. Then we are just algebra, algebraic combination of y f and y o 2. What we essentially go do, what we want to essentially do is that we essentially want to find out an equation of z and then find out the y f and y o 2 in terms of z that then that becomes very useful. Okay. So, if you remember that chambered flame solution I mean this this is a very generic solution it is essentially can be called the equilibrium solution also. So, uh, if you remember the chambered flame solution it was like uh, one side you have fuel uh, oozing out and one side you have oxidizer oozing out mm, and then if you do the solution and project the solutions in the mixture fraction space. Okay. So, then you will see that if it is there is no flame if you have if you do not ignite then the solution you will get is essentially like this straight lines once again because it is essentially a linear uh, um, uh, it will turn out to be a linear uh, uh, differential equations partial or ODE depending on the whether you have time or not if it is a steady it will turn out to be essentially an ordinary differential equation as we have seen before. And then uh, for a burning mixture you will have of course, product formation. So, and you will have uh, oxidizer go, uh, dip, uh, going down up to the Z S T and uh, Y F going up uh, from Z S T to, uh, uh, to going to 0 at uh, Z S T. And uh, here you will have the uh, solution of uh, T 2 that is uh, uh, if this is the T 2 and this is T 1. So, this you will have the solution like this. So, it is essentially very um, uh, we, we just have to write this uh, this this uh, thing in the um, uh, in this uh, in the you have to solve it and then you just write it in terms of the z. Uh, if you just solve the for z you will get this thing. So, it is very very simple, but the you see that this uh, just like in uh, we had the, but the idea that this gives you is that just like we solve the 1D chambered flame in space the laminar 1D chambered flame in space you can essentially have a solution in the mixture fraction space also and it is equally representative. Okay. So, of course, you have the maximum temperature at the ZST which is the uh, stoichiometric uh, uh, mixture fraction value. Okay. So, uh, what is the stoichiometric mixture fraction value that is if you put the stoichiometric numbers here the mixture fraction that you get. Uh, so, uh, if for uh, ZST here um, you will get this to essentially go out okay, and um, uh, then uh, we will essentially be left with this and uh, uh, we will have that ZST is equal to essentially this thing. Okay. So, uh, this is the um, so essentially uh, 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 this is the uh, thing you um, get and um, you can basically have uh, this kind of simple laminar solutions in terms of red in terms of z also. You just take a look and uh, you just uh, do this uh, solve this I will not go into this again because we already did the solution of the 1D chamber flame. So, this is just uh, one more step where you convert those solutions into the mixture fraction space. Okay. But then this is important because the solutions you see that 
uh, it gives you an idea that uh, you can using this mixture fraction you can essentially go from the uh, physical space in terms of x to the mixture fraction space which is in terms of z. So, um, uh, you know if all flames essentially have obtained this then the life would have been simple. So, these you know exactly you have essentially analytical results for this, uh, uh, this 1D chamber flame and you can write um, all flames to be essentially in terms of this, but of course that is not true because um, you will see that why uh, this this uh, uh, this temperature can essentially deviate to uh, to temperatures like this from the adiabatic flame temperature and of course, this is the T adiabatic flame temperature uh, for the given mixture. Okay. So, uh, now what we want to do is that now that uh, because of the fact that we have uh, established that uh, uh, the mixture fraction is a very important concept and you can essentially write the temperature okay, uh, or, or uh, species or any reactive species as such as a function of z. Okay, this gives you this idea that uh, this that is possible that uh, when you when you essentially have the solutions in terms of the mixture fraction space and the mixture fraction is a concept scalar. So, the, then the idea is that so let us uh, let us do some modeling in terms of z and uh, first thing is to essentially find out how z you know, this mixture fraction is transported in a turbulent flow. Okay. So, uh, for that we need to essentially develop this uh, kind of uh, averaged uh, equations uh, uh, this Fabry averaged equations for the z and the transport equations of z and then what we will try to do is that we will try to th use these solutions these, these solutions to essentially project uh, this kind of temperature etcetera uh, along the mixture fraction use these solutions to essentially um, uh, uh, essentially uh, define local flamelets. Uh, at, at different points in the flow uh, in terms of the mean z and the z uh, variance of z. So, that is what we will try to do. Okay. So, the idea is that that uh, since uh, this the from these pictures from these uh, pictures of the 1D flame uh, we find that a mixture fraction is a very revealing uh, it essentially acts like an independent variable okay, in this in, in the framework of this uh, 1D chamber flame. So, you can write uh, things like y um, uh, mass fraction, temperature uh, etcetera in terms of the mixture fraction. So, those can be expressed as a function of the mixture fraction. Now, uh, of course, uh, the thing is that, uh, uh, that uh, so essentially if you are told that uh, at a point if you have uh, which is say burning you have um, uh, you have essentially a mixture fraction of say this value okay so then you know the temperature at that point is this you know at a point the z has this value so then you know that the temperature the mixture the you know that the um, uh, the temperature at that point is the adiabatic flame temperature okay so this gives you a map of this different reactive scalars as a function of the mixture fraction value so the idea is that to first we have to know that in a given combustor at a particular point in space what is my mixture fraction value. Now, to know what is that mixture fraction value you need to essentially solve a transport equation of z like in a combustor you know, want to know what is the particular point in at particular point what is the velocity. Okay. So, to know what is the velocity you essentially need to solve for the continuity and the momentum equation and maybe other equations also if you need to if that is a coupled with density. So, similarly just to know what is that point uh, uh, to know in the combustor what is my uh, uh, mixture fraction because if I know my mixture fraction then and if this this solution if I assume this solution holds the simple solution holds in that at each points in the in the flow then uh, just by knowing what is the value of mixture fraction I can find out what is the temperature. Okay. So, first we have to know what is the uh, what is the value of mixture fraction of course, we cannot we do not are not interested in the instantaneous value of mixture fraction but rather we are interested in the average value of mixture fraction and for that we need to first find out and transport equation that gives that gives us the average value of the mixture fraction and the and its variance uh, uh, at a particular point in flow. So, to we need to first define a governing equation that will tell us essentially what is the uh, uh, what is the how to find out the mixture fraction is transported. Okay.